Hello everyone, I am Riaz Ahmed and today I will discuss an important application of first order nonlinear ordinary differential equations. The title of the lecture is Spread of a Disease Logistic Model. First I will discuss the model of spread of a disease, then the solution of the model which is a first order ODE in this case, and then I will discuss the graph and disk mouse. The example that I will solve today is taken from Advanced Engineering Mathematics 5th edition by Zill and Wright. In this example, it is mentioned that in an isolated college campus, initially there is only one student who is infected from a disease or carrying a flu virus. After four days, there are 50 students who are infected and we have to determine the number of infected students after six days. This is the problem. Before solving it, let us uh, discuss how to model the spread of a disease. This picture is also taken from the same book, Advanced Engineering Mathematics. Uh, so here are the steps, the four steps in the mathematical modeling process are given. Assumption, mathematical formulation, solution, and then the interpretation of the sol solution to check model predictions with the known facts. So we will follow these steps. Assumptions. All individuals in a fixed population have an equally likely chance of being infected and once infected remain in that state. That is the people who have recovered or passed away are also considered as infected people. This is one assumption. Number two, no one leaves the population throughout the duration of the disease. Suppose x plus y is equal to n, where n is the total population, x is the number of individuals who are not infected, y is the number of infected individuals at any time t, and the multiplication of x and y is the number of interactions or encounters between infected and non-infected people. The derivative of y with respect to t represents the rate of change of number of infected people with respect to time. Rate of change of y with respect to t. And this rate of change is directly proportional to the number of interactions between infected and non-infected people. If the interactions increases, the, the number of infected people also increases. So we can write this as for simplicity, y prime is directly proportional to x and y. We can write y prime is equal to k x y, where k is constant of proportionality. And this is the rate at which the disease spreads. So now we can write dy by dt is equal to ky into n minus y. And this is a first order nonlinear equation, which is also called separable because the variables can be separated. This is also called Bernoulli equation. And the example one is equal to 1000 total population. Y of zero is equal to one represents that a student carrying a flu virus initially. So this is the initial condition. After four days, 50 students carrying a flu virus. And the question is how many students carrying a flu virus after six days? And uh, this is not mentioned in the problem, but uh, we should also calculate what is the status after t greater than or equal to seven. So now we have to solve the first order separable ODE. So let us solve this. dy by dt is equal to ky into n minus y. And y of zero is equal to one. This is the initial value problem and y of 4 is equal to 50. This is an extra condition uh, and by using this we have to find k then y of 6 is equal to sign of interrogation and y of t for t greater than or equal to 7. So how to solve the separable equation? There are three steps for solving, separating, integrating and simplifying. So it is easy to separate the variables by dividing by y into n minus y and multiplying with dt. We have separated the variables and now integrating, but we can see that we need to use partial fraction y for integration. 
So we can write this and there is a simple a method for partial fractions uh, when there are linear factors which is called cover up method. By cover up we mean that uh, if we have A divided by the first linear factor, B divided by the second one. So to find A, we have to cover up or to hide this one and put y is equal to zero in the remaining expression. The remaining expression is one over n minus y, so one over n minus zero. This is the value of a. To find b, put n minus y is equal to zero or n is equal to y in this expression uh, if we cover up or hide n minus y because we cannot put n minus y here so we have to put it in 1 over y so 1 over n so both a and b are equal to 1 over n putting the values of a and b and then integration is simple integral of 1 over i is natural log of y integral of minus 1 over n minus y is natural log of n minus y now simplifying so to simplify this natural log of something is equal to this expression this means that we can write this expression is equal to exponential of something or if there is no confusion in the sign of this so we can write y divided by n minus y is equal to this and let us write e raised to the power nc equal to c1 so this is the solution and uh, now we need to find y explicitly in terms of x so uh, this is straightforward calculation uh, we can write this y is equal to n c1 e raised to the power n kt divided by 1 plus c1 e raised to the power n kt we can divide by e raised to the power n kt to simplify it further so we will have n c1 and uh, this will be just c1 now and we will have 1 over e raised to the power n kt which is e raised to the power minus n kt so this is our general solution to the differential equation by applying the initial conditions that initially there was only one student carrying a flow virus so we can put t is equal to 0 y is equal to 1 and the value of c is 1 over n minus 1 putting this value in the general solution and simplifying we have this as a solution to the initial value problem by putting n is equal to 1000 this is the complete particular solution to the given initial value problem now the second condition or the extra condition was after four days y of 4 is equal to 50 this means that we have to put t is equal to 4 and y is equal to 50 and uh, then we have to find the root k so sometimes we can find it simply by calculator by cross multiplication and then we can write this as minus 4000 k equal to natural log of this expression after simplification it is 19 by 999 by using the calculator we can find the value of k is this or this After six days, now use this value in the calculator uh, to find uh, the required number of students after six days. So if we use the values t is equal to six and k is equal to this, the number of infected students will be 276. Similarly, by calculator, we can also find that after seven days, the number will be 507 after 8 it will be 735 after 12 days 993 after 14 days 999 and after 15 days it is approximately 1000 the total population will be infected after 15 days the graph by Desmos. the link for this is given in the description given below uh, so if you click on that link you will come right here here is the solution this is the solution of the red color graph is data of the solution we can see that when t is equal to zero there was only one student infected 
when T is 4, 50 students when T is 6, 276, after 8 days, 735, after 10 days, 953 almost, and after 12 days, and so on. And this is the logistic curve. Uh, you can also see this in the projector mode. The red color graph is the graph of the logistic curve. Okay, if you want to see the geometrical meaning of the uh, extra condition, which was y at 4 is equal to 50, it was here, and this was the equation. So if you want to know that, what's, what is the geometrical meaning of the solution k or the root? The root means uh, the graph of uh, the equation passes through the x-axis. So if this is the equation, write this in the form, 1000 divided by this expression minus 50. Let this is a function. So the function will cross x-axis at the value of k. In this most, you can see that if we write that function in this form, minus 50. And uh, the value of x here represent the value of k. So that value of k or x, we can zoom it, we can further zoom it, and we can find that uh, the value of k is the value where the graph passes through x axis. So similarly, you can further zoom it and find the value 0 0.0099. Something so this is the geometrical meaning of the root of the value k. Okay, so that's it for today's lecture. Thank you for watching this video.